Well, a warm welcome to you all. We are on location today, and this video is all about beef waffles and stinky, skunky dogs. I'm JJ, I'm a life coach, and I eat mostly meat. I'm Eric, I'm a novelist, and I eat mostly meat. First off, I wanna thank everyone who's put in suggestions for different recipes to help with Eric's meat aversion. Yeah. <laughs> we have a lot to try. And last night we tried meat waffles. We did <laughs> indeed try meat waffles. Yes, yeah, so we basically took ground beef, uh, cheese, and egg, and sort of immersion blendered it all together. It does not get completely smooth, but it gets a different texture and then put it in a waffle iron, mm -hmm. which made the outside crispy, yep. but basically it was like a different textured hamburger to me. Yeah, it was like too cooked, it was too well done. Uh. And it looked like a waffle, so I wanted it to be sweet. So in that regard, it wasn't really a hit. <laughs> and I didn't get the cheese. No, it was I mixed didn't get in. I cheese yeah. uh, vibe from it, so. So we have leftovers. Yeah. It's a goo. It's kind of a goo you ladle onto the co yeah. the waffle maker. So we have leftovers. Are you up for it tonight? I wasn't sure if I should eat it for lunch or more waffles. Yeah. Yeah, we can give it another try. Okay, good. I'll put more cheese on top of the waffle. Mm -hmm. Or maybe we can come up with a carnivore sauce to be like a fake syrup. Oh, true. <laughs> but then will that just mess up your mind even more? It depends on how rich and creamy it is. <laughs> If it's really rich and creamy, it might be excellent. And Maybe. I might love it. Yeah. We did. That was one of the suggestions as well, is to look, really Google carnivore sauces. And Which I have not done yet. No, I have not either. But, but hey. they're all going to be cream-based, right? Probably. Well, or hollandaise. Which is eggs. Yes. You've done the uh, Bella, the steak and butter gal, dip it in egg yolk. Yeah, I didn't like that. Okay. Well, hollandaise isn't quite the same, but okay. it's... Kinda All right. similar. Well, I'll give it a shot, yeah. Yeah, so we'll figure that out. <laughs> so, oh, we're not in the studio today. No, we're outside. We are outside at our property. Yep, behold. <laughs> this is a piece of it. Out in the country, it's a very windy day, and the dogs are complaining. Yep. <laughs> One of the, the old dog is coming out of the car. He wants to go home so that he can get a treat. <laughs> The other one just wants to run on the trails in front of the side-by-side -side for miles at a time. And miles. And he doesn't want to rest and sit here and do nothing. He's rolling in the grass right now. <laughs> so they're going to cause a distraction throughout the video. Now, speaking of dogs, though, the yeah. old... Okay, we're, we're going to get into that one okay. in a minute. Let's talk about Lucky first, right. okay? So a few weeks back, I've done a subscription dog food service for quite a while. I switched maybe about a year ago, been very pleased with it. And all of a sudden I got this email saying that, oh my gosh, we are running out of, su our supplies are low, so we're not gonna ship you your dog food <laughs> until the supplies are back, which left us in a bit of a pickle. Now it's a really high quality food. So I just started supplementing more meat. I just, and they didn't have any digestive issues that we noticed. So I did that. I spoke to a dog food expert <laughs> and she assured me that if dogs eat either a really high meat-based diet or, or even a raw diet, mm -hmm. that you can kind of switch back and forth because I've been reluctant to switch him, switch them to a more meat-based diet for when we travel. Yeah. You can't give the dog sitter here. I hope you've got a big freezer <laughs> for all this raw food. So she assured me they could switch back and forth. So they've been eating a lot of meat lately. Now we did get the regular dog food, so I'm stockpiling that mm -hmm. for when we travel, but we've noticed something about our older dog. Yes, his fur is bad. He has a, a dark brown outer coat, but then he's got an undercoat that's a very light sort of tan color. Mm -hmm. And somewhere along the line, he was trimmed too close to the skin or something, mm -hmm. and his top coat kind of vanished on the top of his back. Mm -hmm. So he had this really weird two-tone color scheme. <laughs> yes, and his tail. And his tail. He he grows the feathering on the bottom of the tail, yep. but the top is kind of naked. It's like a naked rat tail yeah. stub. Because uh, they're Britney Spaniels, so they have these dock tails. Well, I noticed that that tan, I'll, I'll slice in some B-roll, 
there's sprouting brown fur coming out of his old top coat has been revived. <laughs> and how old is he? Uh, he's 12. He looks a little bit like a leopard right now <laughs> on top. <laughs> and his limp. His limp? Might be improving a little bit. He has hip dysplasia. He's pretty mobile. He still gets quite a bit of walking here on the property. Oh, yeah. Yet he suffers from it. It definitely causes more aches and pains. And he, his front leg was bothering him for a while, but that seems to be... Kind of getting a little bit better. Yeah, so maybe it's me. It's a proper canine diet. <laughs> maybe proper canine diet. They love it. They do. It takes them, what, two, three seconds to eat it? It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. They wolf it down. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even try to enjoy it. Oh, Arrow. Well. God, he reeks. Yeah. Yesterday we had our meat waffles, and then we came back out to the property for a late night. Well, late for us. Yeah. <laughs> a sun, Let's say sunset. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had a few things we had to tie up, a few work things we had to tie up here on the property, and then we were going to do... A tour with the younger dog so he could get another run in. Yep. In, in the evening, we saw a lot of deer. We mm -hmm. saw a turkey. We saw tons of squirrels. Yeah. <laughs> and then we didn't see it. <laughs> but we stopped at the boat dock and walked out. And we were like, oh, it smells like skunk. <laughs> oh, wow. It's really bad. <laughs> yeah. And then it followed us up the hill into the barn where we parked the side by side. And then he got in the car, in the oh. truck, and it was him. <laughs> he just looked at us. You can't see it. Oh, there he yeah. is. He defended. <laughs> well, he got it right in the face. Uh huh. And we, in the middle of a renovation project here, there's no place to wash the dog. Plus, our skunk solution was at where we're currently living. Mm -hmm. And so we had to get him home. And we took him in the truck, Ugh. and that was a long 20 minutes. <laughs> it was a long 20 minutes. And oh I've my. been trying to clean the truck out, and fortunately, I had removable seat covers for the pickup. So I pulled those, and I've been using skunk away or skunk off or whatever it's called. Mm. And that seems to be working on the seat covers not as well on the dog. I need to try it on his collars because the, the nylon collars, they're gone. We threw them away. <laughs> But they have an invisible fence that they wear at our home, and it's bad. <laughs> and they wear a GPS collar when they're here, and that is also totally skunked and terrible. What was amazing to me was he made no physical contact with us, but during the ride home, our clothes were infused with the skunk smell. Mm -hmm. And... We put them outside. Yeah. And this morning when I went out there, it was just like, oh, it was dark when we got home. I had to get our video recording light. <laughs> I'm out. like, we need some lights out I here. I that outside. <laughs> it was like giving him the third degree. It was kind of cold. Yeah. And so he was shivering as we were putting this skunk remover shampoo on him. That was, it was miserable for him. It was miserable for us. And then the house smelled this morning because he was in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a crazy to me how much skunk smell can go upwind. <laughs> right, right now it's happening. Here's one thing I was really happy about though is that our dogs are not allowed on the furniture. Could right. you imagine? Oh, oh. Yeah. He does however use it for our one couch for a towel. <laughs> so we put sheets around that. Yeah. It is much better today but yeah. I mean this is clearly a multi, multi day multi part project. Yeah. Oh, Arrow. You're going to see the B-roll of him and you're going to say, oh, he's so cute and so pretty and you're not going to be able to smell him because <laughs> we don't have smell o vision <laughs> on YouTube. But if you could, you wouldn't want to touch him. No. Poor Pop. <laughs> so I'm out here. Uh, I was mowing earlier today because the grass is super tall, but also to get some sunshine. Oh, yeah. Because it's important to get that vitamin D and the sunshine in Wisconsin. <sighs> During the seasons, you can get it because... It's too cold most of the year to be out with exposed skin. In case you can't tell, we're both fair skinned. What I've been doing even last year was using sort of a mineral based sunscreen. I still, I know it's still not great, but when I'm swimming the first couple times yeah. in the year, because there's just, I'm going to get a bad burn. No, you, you are not immune to burn by being carnivore. Apparently not, not yet anyway. 
because I felt like I was a little resistant. Okay. But I haven't really put it to the test. I guess maybe I, ha I mean, I can still get pink. I know I can still get a little pink. So, but for the most part, when I'm working here and, and out having lunch outside or something, I'm totally sunscreen free. Yeah. So that's been good. That's been a total shift because I was literally, my mom told me that the sun would age me when I was young. So at age 13, I started moisturizing twice a day. Mm -hmm. And in high school, my friends would be lying out. <laughs> it was the 80s, right? And I liked to swim, so I'd swim. But then when I was on shore, I was like covering myself up with mm -hmm. the towel so I wouldn't get any sun. Last year, we got tan. Like people yeah. were like, holy cow. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're over here working. Uh, you get a lot of hours in the sun. Yeah. It does feel like it's a fine line between not going overboard yeah. <laughs> and yet getting the vitamin D and the, and the other, whatever we get from the sun. Yep. You've got to get back to work pretty soon. Yeah, I've got to do a little more mowing and then I'm going to go home and edit this video. Yeah. And we got to get some B-roll of the dogs. Yeah, I'm not work. I'm not in work clothes today. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing any work outside today. I slept so poorly after the skunk episode. <laughs> I'm really not at 100% yeah. mentally. Yeah, I'm a little little lower than normal and too. And I haven't even had lunch. I had a late oh. breakfast and it's almost 2 o'clock and I haven't eaten and I'm not really hungry. So yeah. I'll probably skip it, which is the wrong kind of intermittent fast window, right? No, it's no. Because I'll have eaten at like nine, but then we'll eat again at six. So there's really not a good window. No, there. because as, if you're not snacking, mm -hmm. if you have about three hours, this is based on what I saw on Ben Bickman's lecture yesterday. Oh, okay. If you And I've heard him talk about it before, but if you have about three hours between and don't snack, your insulin can return oh. to more of a baseline level. So while it's not the same as a long intermittent fast, it is still beneficial to bring your, oh, okay. bring it back down to like when we were in the 70s and we only ate three meals a day. I have to take the dog on one more run yep. before we head home and I've got <laughs> some skunk duties to do there. <laughs> Are you gonna try the baking soda peroxide Dawn dish soap solution? I did try Dawn dish soap this morning. But not with the hygiene peroxide? No, I'm, I mean, I might try it. We're kind of desperate, but I feel like they, everyone throws like peroxide vinegar and baking soda at, and even Dawn at mm -hmm. everything. So I'm kind of skeptical of it, but I did do the Dawn because uh, apparently the skunk spray is oil based. So the Dawn helps with grease and oils. Yeah. But. Well, what I read was the hydrogen peroxide and the baking soda somehow amps up the oxygen, which then binds to the oils of the skunk spray and then sequesters the sulfur that's in it. Okay. And that's what makes the smell go away. Oh. But we could just sequester the dog in an entirely different state. Hey, Illinois is not too far away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you've got skunk remedies, we're yeah. up for those too. <laughs> Let's call it. Okay, sign off. Bye. Bye.